Hey, hey, it's Pika calling in from Singapore. It's Thursday night, you guys. We're almost to the weekend. Man, I can't wait. I actually have the weekend off this weekend. Never thought it'd happen, but I'm kind of excited. Both Saturday and Sunday. So, yeah, better get all my shit straight on Friday night so then I don't have to go out and do anything crazy. I can actually enjoy the whole weekend. All right, so Thursday, let's talk about that for a second. Um, went into work this morning. Um... Still wasn't feeling all that good, but, you know, I managed. I'm actually kind of impressed. I haven't taken any real medicine at all this time with this stupid cold. (laughs) Um, But I've been managing. I've been doing vitamins, lots of water, eating really well, trying to sleep. Sleeping is a little bit more difficult when your nose is blocked. (laughs) So i got to find, like, the right way to to lay so that my nose unblocks itself and I can breathe again. Anyway, so, yeah, I went to work, um, got a little bit of work done. Uh, Before we had a meeting, I had to go out to Growth Tribe today, and we had, you know, a sit down to talk about um, strategy, what we need to do next, because end of the year is coming, people getting into exams right now, so it's going to be slow for a little bit. From here, pretty much on to the end of the year, it's, it's, it's pretty much going to be a little bit more slow. Not many people, you know, rushing to learn anything, maybe getting prepped up for next year, but not as, as much because, you know, like I said, end of the year, exams and all that stuff. Um, really, really good uh, meeting though because we sat there for like I don't know two and a half three hours and then came back off to the office and we were working on admissions forms and um, attendance sheets I was collating testimonials that we've collected from last year just you know just busy work at the moment because I need to get all the little things out the way so I can start on the big projects as soon as they are given to me so yeah work went by pretty fast I mean before I knew it it was six o'clock it was time to go so I went to pick up the little uh, the little one and um, came back home. And all in all, it was a pretty damn good day. Uh, I, I forgot to mention this morning, right? So I was meant to do the Periscope this morning at 6. Oh, girl, actually woke up at 6.15. And then I was like, well, damn. Um, I kind of, <laughs> I screwed that one up. So I pushed it back. Instead of stressing out and trying to rush and uh, brush my teeth and like get on the screen as fast as possible, I went ahead and pushed back. And uh, I posted it for 9 p.m. instead of 6 p.m. So it gave me a little bit of grace period. Because what I have to what I have to think about is when I am free, where I won't be disturbed, where I can be that I won't be disturbed. It's quiet and calm and peaceful for me to think and actually really, you know, talk to you guys. So the reason I even picked 6 in the morning in the first place is because obviously it would be right as y'all are getting off. So even if you're not watching me, you can listen. And um, I figured... Early morning would be better than late night, mostly because I can't tell when I'll fall asleep or what will happen. Something could happen where she's up really late and I can't, you know, I can't get on the thing. So I'm trying to think of a great time that, you know, I will be undisturbed and can give my 100% to the audience. So that's why I originally came up with 6 in the morning. But as you all know, I've been having sleep issues. And yeah, this morning was, was not a good morning. Everything was rushed. Everything was, you know just out of place. I I wanted to go back and start over, but it's okay. Um, So finally, yeah, I pushed it back to nine o'clock because I wanted to give myself a little bit of a break and not stress it too much because I know by about 8.30, 8.45, I would have dropped her off at school already. And then there's a really great playground right by the school where I can just sit there and and broadcast straight from there. I figured it would be nice to be outside for a little bit and to broadcast instead. So that was actually really nice. It was a different feel to it and um, I feel like I conveyed my message pretty well I talked about accepting defeat and um, Bruce Lee basically says that it's not over until you you've accepted that you lost I mean if you haven't accepted that you lost obviously you're not done you got to get up and keep swinging you know what I mean so um, yeah don't accept defeat keep going keep swinging there's always room for you know for a little more effort there's always time to t- try one more time just just do it again anyway that was the message this morning right now my message to you is no <laughs> no is an important word okay no to some people means man i damn i failed you know i can't i can't get my sales i can't do this whatever um but no is not that bad it's just a very important word it's a very important word to me you're not done with that person until they've said no. I don't want. And then you walk away. Um, because to me, no is a little more definitive than maybe. I hate maybe. Either you tell me yes or no. Tell me yes or no. So I know exactly where I stand with you. If you say maybe, we're going to go on forever. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so whenever you're, you're looking at sales, let's talk about it from a sales perspective, shall we? So everybody out here is trying to sell something, all right? Either you're selling a product, you're selling a service, you're selling time, timeshare, time, I don't know, real estate, it could be anything. You're selling something, okay? And I was always taught that if you increase the amount of no's you get, your yeses will fall into place, okay? If you go just for the yeses, like you say, oh yeah, my quota is five yeses today or five sales today, um, you're going to try five times, and if you get three out of five no's, you're going to start giving up already. It's just human psychology. We don't like the word no that much. We don't like being rejected. And the thing is, you're not rejecting you per se. You're rejecting the opportunity. Um, but on the flip side, the fun funnily enough, when they buy, they buy because of you. They're buying your personality, your service, your guarantee that this is a good product, your, um, I don't know, your definition of what this will mean to them. So, yes, when they say yes, they're buying you as a service person for whatever product they're buying or whatever service they're buying. But when they say no, they're not necessarily saying no to you. I'm so sorry about that. I had a phone call just come in. Anyway, so um, we tend to take it personally when people say no. But we shouldn't. What we should instead, and this is a really great book for y'all if, uh, if you haven't heard of it. It's called Go For No. Go For No. Instead of going for five sales, why don't you go for a talk to 20 leads? Because I guarantee you can talk to 20 leads and you can still get to the 20. Whether it's a yes or no, it doesn't matter. But you hit the 20, you feel good about the 20. Does that make sense? Whereas if you go for five sales, that is a yes. And you go for five sales, if you get to three people out of the five, supposedly, because your mind has been tricked into thinking that you only need five. You need more than five to get your five yeses, correct? So if you, if you, if you go for no instead, you're more likely to get the yeses that you're looking for. So I would advise you to go for no instead. The other thing is don't quit until you've heard no. Don't quit until the other person has said, you know what, I'm good. That's okay. I don't want any more. Or I don't want you. I don't want that. I don't want whatever it is. I don't want. Until that person that says, no, I don't want this. You're golden. You know what I mean? So very, very quick message today. I want you to go for no. I don't want you to be scared of no. No is just a word, but at least you know on which side of everything you fall. If you know, if you know that it's either black or it's white, you know exactly what to do next. If it's in the gray, you're not exactly sure. You get stuck with, you know, um, your idea of what's going on. So I would rather you go for no. Push for no. Push for no. Um, it's a little more tricky when it comes to matters of the heart, though. There are some people out there that will push you, push you, push you until you say no because you just can't stand it anymore. You're being pressured into it. That may not necessarily be how you actually feel about the situation, but because that person is like freaking out or like, you know, I don't know, just they're in a panic. So they're panicking you and you just you have no choice but to say no because you can't give them exactly what they want right then. So then it becomes a little more complicated, obviously. But for the most part, as objective as you can be. There are other ways to say that instead of saying no. You can say, you know what, right now is not the time. Or you can say, you know what, um, I'm not in the best mood to receive anything right now and I'm going to give you the worst possible feedback. Why don't we try this another time? Um, and even then, you know, it doesn't always work. Uh, I've had situations where um, I remember one incident very clearly. Uh, we owned a store in the mall in Charlottesville. It's called Bali Art. Bali Art. We had it for many years. And um, it was actually kind of funny because we sold a lot of cultural art pieces in a predominantly white city where there was not a lot of culture. There wasn't a lot of reason to buy that kind of stuff except for two, twice out of the year, basically. So basically at the beginning of the summer, people come in to buy all this stuff to decorate their house for the summer or to start um, buying stuff to accumulate to take to college and decorate their dorm room. The other time that they all come in and buy this stuff is when they want something exotic for Christmas presents. So unfortunately, it wasn't as um, profitable as, as it could be, but you know, that was the thing. We, we, owned the, we owned the store, we ran the store, you know, we do what we could. I remember one day that we had, um, we had something we needed to do. I mean, there's always paperwork or something because we were the one, we were the employees. We didn't have anyone outside of our family working in the store. So there was something, some kind of paperwork I had to do with my mom and for some strange reason, Okay, it really wasn't strange. We, 
we fought more than we like you know enjoyed being around each other it was really strange I, I guess it's like a mother daughter thing whatever anyway so we got into doing the paperwork and she had her own idea about how to do it and I had my own idea about how to do it and we weren't our relationship wasn't mature enough to handle that yet so we were at loggerheads we were fighting each other we you know she was yelling I was upset and we were both moody and finally I was like you know what ma okay um we've tried this for a little bit now and we're not getting anywhere my friends are coming to see me how about this how about I go out and hang out with my friends for a little bit I promise I will come back in a couple of hours and we'll try this again Nah, it wasn't one of those things she wanted to hear. She wanted it done now, and it was now or never. And basically, I was adamant. Look, I can't. Do, I, we weren't getting anywhere. I didn't want to waste time. So I was like, Look, let's. Let, can I please just leave and and go do this first? Let's clear our heads. Let's get away from the problem for a second. And we'll come back and we'll try it again. Maybe we'll see things a little bit clearer later. That's the intention I had. Obviously, I didn't communicate it that well, but um, she was like, Fine, whatever, go. And she was still mad at me. But the thing is. I tried my best to tell her no in a way that I thought would relay to her that it wasn't her I was saying no to. It was just that this situation was not getting resolved. It was kind of stuck. It was it was almost like quicksand. It was getting worse by the minute. And I wanted to get as much distance from it as I could. Not saying that I never wanted to do it again. I told her I would come back. I just I couldn't do it right now. And it was the perfect timing because my friends were coming in. All she, all she could hear was, oh, I want to play with my friends rather than do this with you. So I'm not saying my mom was wrong or right. All I'm saying is sometimes no is difficult when it's matters of the heart. My mom, I love her. I would do anything for her. I would kill for her. Okay? Um, but sometimes we just don't see eye to eye. And that's normal. That'll happen in every relationship. Mother, daughter, son, father, whatever. Siblings, brothers, cousins husbands, wives, everything, okay? There's going to be a time where you don't agree with each other. And when you don't agree, you're not actually as nice to each other as you possibly could be. Um, but like I said, I tried to give her a no in the, in the nicest possible way, and it didn't work either. So you got to be aware of those things. I do want you to go for no, though. Um, for me, I would rather, um, let's say I have a friendship that's not working out so well, and rather than wonder if I'm their friend or not, yeah, I'm that stupid person who's going to ask, look, I mean, are we cool or what? And I would rather you say no than say, yeah, okay, it's okay. Because if you say, yeah, it's okay, or you know what, there's nothing wrong, I don't see anything wrong, but you're still going to act crazy or whatever, I'm going to go about my business and do what I've always done. As a friend, I'm going to hit you with, hey, what's up, how are you? I'm going to pay attention to your social media, and if you sound like you've got something going on, I'm going to ask you, hey, you okay? How can I help? Um, I'm going to check in on you from time to time. I am, I'm that friend that's always going to be in the background, but in the background in a way that you know I'm in the background. You can feel my presence. You know I'm there. Not lurking and nothing crazy like that, but like, you know that if you were ever in trouble and you turned around, you'd see me. You'd be able to get in touch with me. You'd be able to get a hold of me. That's the kind of friend I am. So I'd rather you say, you know what? I don't think we're cool no more. We, we can't be friends no more, blah, blah, whatever. Just tell it to me straight because otherwise I'm kind of stupid. <laughs> I'm just going to assume that we're still cool. And I'm going to go about doing the same stuff that I've always done. I'm always going to be there. That's just who I am. Um, I don't know. I think I made my point. Go for no. Go for no. Don't be rude about it, though, okay? Don't be like, well, shit, are you do this or not? <laughs> That's not what I mean. If it's something about sales, if you're trying to get more sales, if you're trying to increase your, your odds of succeeding at something, try more often is what I'm trying to say. The more times you fail, the closer you are to your success. Does that make sense? You can't try five people for five sales and then get frustrated at the third no. <laughs> that's unrealistic now you can try 20 people and somewhere along you might you might get three sales today but even then that's better than nothing right you may get three sales today you may get seven or twelve tomorrow you never know it's just the odds but play the odds use the odds in your favor what is that from hunger games may the odds ever be in your favor Increase the odds. Increase the amount of times you try so that there is room enough for success in there somewhere. You think we fell down four times and got up five and suddenly we're able to walk? No. We're falling and falling and falling and falling and falling. We trip forwards. We fall sideways. We fall backwards. I mean, <laughs> 
I still fall. What was it? Like three, four weeks ago, I slipped in the rain and fell. And I mean, like, fell hard. Bruised my whole right side and couldn't walk straight, you know, for a little bit. But I'm okay. I mean, I'm 36 years old enough, though, okay? It wasn't like I was running anywhere. I was actually trying to be careful with flip-flops on, and I slipped anyway. (laughs) Falling is not the problem. You getting up, that's the problem. How seriously you take the fall, that's the problem. Anybody can fall, and you can still get back up. But if you suddenly like beat yourself down because, oh my god, I fell, I'm not good enough to walk. Are you kidding? Come on. That's just foolishness. You get that out your head. And I know I'm saying all this, and I know for a fact that I've been through this very same scenario, very, very recently. But it's because that I'm telling you. Get back up. Try again. But try not to take your ego down with it. Uh, not your ego. What is that? Your confidence. There's a difference between ego and confidence. Ego is that bragging right thing. Confidence is that it's a quiet strength. Yeah, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. What was that? The little engine this, that could. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Ego is like, yeah, man. Did you know what I did? Do you know what I'm cool about? It's very, very loud. But the ego actually stems from insecurity. It's not from confidence. Your insecurity is loud. Your insecurity is the one who has to like announce themselves when they come into a room. <laughs> Confidence comes in quietly, acknowledges everyone in the room, makes the rounds a little bit, shaking hands quietly, not like, hey, what's going on? It's not like that. Go for no. Push for no. So you know exactly where you stand. Increase the number of times that you try. So you have a chance at succeeding. You know, I started a blog back in 2013 when I first came to Singapore. And I wrote, I don't know, five, six blog pieces, and then I stopped. And then it got hard. And then I decided, you know what, maybe it's a little too personal. Maybe I shouldn't put all this information out there. And then I quit. I hadn't tried enough to succeed. Let me put it to you in in terms that you actually might understand. This is episode 74. And up to date, I have not had more than one or two live viewers. But I do this every night without fail, like clockwork. Okay, maybe not like clockwork because there isn't a set time. Um, But it's up every day on Facebook. And I know that I have people that go back and listen to it. They've told me so. But as far as live audience, I don't have that many people. I had one person on here for a second that it said, you know, was actually listening and then they kind of disappeared off of there. And, um, yeah, I'm not about to let that, like, hurt my feelings, though. I'm going to say what I need to say because I have faith that at some point the law of attraction is going to pull you to me when you need me most. And at that point, I will have a library of episodes that could possibly help. How about that? (laughs) Anyway, um, either way, these are all little life lessons, stuff that I go through on a daily basis, stuff that I've like picked up for myself, stuff that I already knew, but you know, kind of hit me in the face today. So I wanted to talk about it. Stuff like that. I said stuff a lot, huh? So what is the lesson for today? We're talking about no. Go for no. Push for the no. You don't want to maybe. You want to know one way or another. Increase the amount of times you try. Give yourself the chance to succeed. Don't go for how many sales. Go for how many people you will speak with. That number is a little easier to hit and there's no like pressure on whether they say yes or no. It's just 20 people. Go talk to 20 people today. That's doable. Absolutely doable because when you look at it that way, You're looking at three-minute phone calls. Three minutes and 20 people. If you don't take a break in between, it's about an hour's worth of work. And that's totally doable. You could do that. If it's a really great conversation, yeah, okay, it'll take a little bit longer. But wouldn't it be worth it to have a great conversation with somebody? Doesn't that mean that you connected with somebody? Doesn't that mean that to connect with somebody, they will remember you the next time you have to call them? 
and maybe a little more favorably than if you like started a speech and <laughs> and couldn't get out of the script when they said no. Why not go for no? Why not try more? Fail more. Fail faster, damn it. You know you got this. All right, I'm going to holler at y'all tomorrow. Tomorrow's episode 75, y'all. Where has the time gone? Full moon in Aries tonight, which means power, power, power in the air. Go get yourself a goal. Go smash that goal this weekend, seriously. I know I got shit to do. I'm excited. I love you guys. Y'all take it easy. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.